The workshop's one of the most important things that happens during the year. Because family reunions are just like that. When family comes home, when we're all together again, we're singing praises to God, praying for one another, standing around marveling as we reflect with one another the preaching of the Word of God and just listening to the shouts and squeals as we see people we haven't seen for a while and we rush into their arms. It makes it a really big day. And today starts this week and it starts with the reunion already beginning. Few things can be better than that. Sometimes when our folks leave us for a while to go do important things, they come home and things have changed and we get to catch up and we get to be excited about what's going on. Obadiah's bigger. If you're a new student, Obadiah is a very important part of our, our family. He uh, hides from us for a while and then he runs into our arms after that. Um, Volpetas have a little baby, we just can't see it yet. But we're so grateful, so grateful for the growth of your family. Our workshop theme is Preach the Word. I can't think of really one that would be more appropriate for us, can you? Preach the Word seems to speak from deep inside our DNA. And I pray that we will always value the preaching of the Word. 2 Timothy 4, 1-2, it says, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by His appearing in His kingdom, Preach the word, be ready in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. Preach the word. It's a time-honored tradition here at Sunset, isn't it? It's one of the ways people know us out in the brotherhood. Everywhere I go speak, whatever state, whatever country I'm in, it can be the Philippines, it can be anywhere One of us stands up to speak, and the others who know us, and those others from sunset, they all resound with, preach the word. And every time it's said, you're focused. It reminds you of why you're there. And what's so great is to stand up in a place where you don't know we have any family. And when you hear that preach the word coming out, it takes you right back to this spot. It takes you right back to our flags to our gathering here. And it reminds you that this isn't about us. It's about Him. This isn't about our opinions and our thoughts. It's about the Word of God. The Holy Spirit given Word of God. And that's a time-honored tradition. But preach the Word has got to be more than a motto that we say before people speak. It's got to be more than an automatic response we have to someone standing up. It's got to to mean more than that. But then it's also, it's got to mean more than just what we say before a sermon is preached. It's got to be what we say with every heartbeat every day to every one of us as we go out to share the good news of Jesus with the world around us. Because one way or another, today, your task is preach the word. And I just wish we could follow you around through your day. Wish we could have walked around with you guys in Mexico City and when you're out there and someone's on the bus standing beside you, lean over in your ear and go, preach the word. Because that's really what it's about. When you are going and you're going through the store and someone ahead of you is looking for change and realizes they don't have enough and you're standing behind them digging in your pocket, that's, it's, that's when we need to whisper in each other's ear, preach the word. When you're sitting there and someone's heart broke and sick, preach the word. When someone feels like they don't fit in, preach the word. When someone just doesn't know Jesus the way we know Jesus, I wish we could all be there to say, preach the word. Because it's something that's far bigger than that. We tend to make preaching the word a something that fits in little segments of a day on Sunday. 
behind a piece of furniture like this, but the teaching that a mom does on the floor surrounded by blocks and little toys. She needs to hear the word, preach the word, just as much as we need to hear it from right here. Preach the word is bigger than we think. We need to preach the word to everyone. That's the command. We were talking in our evangelism class Friday. We were talking about how to the nations doesn't limit us to saying, as long as we get one guy in every nation who's heard the gospel, we've done our job. It is every person in every place and every type and every strata and every social setting and, and everyone there possible needs to hear us preach the word. We need to preach the word every day. This picture's from Bolivia. It's a name coordinator named Eric. Every day they would go and the AIM team would fix sandwiches and take out there to these construction workers who were sending all their money back to their families. And as they would eat, he'd preach the word to not only to everyone, but in every place. Because he wasn't just a preacher in a pulpit. He was a preacher in a world telling the world about Jesus. We need to preach the world in every place. This happens to be Malawi, one of my really good friends, Salik Gambi, preaching the word door to door. You know, in their school on Wednesday, you don't wear the same clothes you wear the rest of the days because you're going to be door knocking all day. Isn't that awesome? They go out and they work and they evangelize in the streets. We need to preach the word in every way. We need, we've got to be innovative. If someone in Central America can't hear, someone like Abby needs to begin speaking. Every one of us preach the word. Every one of us preach the word to everyone. Every one of us preach the word every day. Every one of us preach the word in every place. And every one of us preach the word in every way. I wish that the world would surrender and come into our assemblies. I wish they would be sitting there and getting ready for their day and getting ready to do whatever they do on Sunday, maybe take a nap. I don't know what they do. But as the world is out there, I wish they would go, you know, I'm just going to go to sunset today. I'm just going to listen to the word of God being taught. But they're not making that decision. So we have to mobilize and we have to move out and we have to preach the word wherever they are. It's our theme. Our workshop's important. We get to feature what we do. We get to help our alumni. And some of our alumni come back wounded. Some will come back hurting. And we have the chance to lift them up. Some come back excited and we get the chance to drink in their stories. But we get the chance to be there for our family. All of those who give and so many that work with us, they come over here for the workshop and it's our chance to say thank you. We get to introduce ourselves to new people who will fall in love with you and fall in love with this work and become supporters. We get to recruit new students. Every workshop, there's someone step up and say, I've never even thought about coming to Sunset, but here I come. I'm ready right now. Isn't that awesome? Maybe you don't have enough support, or maybe some of our faculty doesn't. This may be where they meet the person that takes care of that need. That's an amazing thing, too. We get to fellowship together, and we get to study together and hear great teaching together. But maybe more important than anything else, we get to fulfill our role of being a lighthouse in this area to dispense the true light of God, biblical truth. It was read for us. I appreciated that. Uh, my son Daniel is here, sitting by his mama. Um, my boys used to get so tired of this passage. I said it to them all the time. They'd be going to school. This is what we'd say. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Knowing from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. We're going to talk about the responsibilities we have as we go through this time together. And as we do it, I want you to think about doing it for Jesus. 
It's not something you do because you're a student. It's something you do because you're a member of the body of Christ. You just happen to be here in this place. 20 steps, and they're going to be really fast. The first one is look up. We need to be praying. I've checked the weather. They say it's going to be pretty good. You pray for the weather anyway. How many times do those guys actually get it right? Let's be praying to the Lord of heaven. Let's also be praying for safe travel. There have been times where we have started our workshop saying someone was driving here, they were in a horrible wreck, someone died, someone was hurt. We don't want that. Let's pray for safe passage back and forth. Let's be praying for all of them. This is normally where I look at the students and say, you really got to sign up, this is workshop week, I can't believe this. You guys signed up in like 20 minutes. You took all the blanks. I don't even know what to do with that. Um... So I'm just going to say thank you. That's never really happened before, so there you go. You Congratulations. You need to pick up a program. There are some out here on the seats. Uh, we have others if you don't get one, and uh, we'd be glad for you to, to get those. Let's, uh, Jeff, as we're, as we're leaving today, let's just have some over here so that they can grab them as we go. Um, Jeff Rader works hard on this program, does such a good job. And um, we want you to have one so you'll know what's happening. Keep it with you. You'll want to know what, who you want to see and who you want to listen to. You need to call up those around you, maybe your supporters, family members, anyone close enough to come and say, there's still a chance, come be with us, it's going to be a big deal. You need to wake up and be on time. I know for some of you that's a, that's a huge challenge. I think for three or four days, you can probably pull it off. We will have people speaking at 8 a.m. Now, the Amers are going, but it's a long walk. Well, wake up early. Uh, we get to rest the following Monday. We'll take that day off. Gather up. Gather up, bring your family and friends with you. If you've been having a Bible study with someone, bring them. If you've got a friend you'd like to know more about Christ and maybe want to start a Bible study, bring them. If you've got family members that love the Word of God, bring them. Uh, we'll start at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday with Matt leading us in songs, and then um, we'll continue from there. Dress up. I don't mean dressing up really fancy, but dress up pretty respectable. Dress up like we would um, to come here today. Except on Saturday, if you haven't received one yet, there are t-shirts there in the back for you. Uh, those who are speaking, um, you'll have one inside your packet. But everyone else, I'd like for you to get a t-shirt. And on Saturday, let's wear them. We'll show them that we have alternate dressing methods here at Sunset. Wear your jeans and t-shirt, whatever you want. Not whatever you want. Uh, Paul will kill me for that. Do not wear whatever you want. But... Um, wear the t-shirt. I think that it will give, uh, give a good impression as people see the red flashing through the crowd. Open up doors. Greet everyone. You are the one who gets to put the face on what this school looks like to our world by how you treat those who come into our home. Talk up. These people you don't know who are putting on name tags, who once sat in this chair... They'd like nothing more than to talk to you, than to be with you for a few minutes. It means a lot. Um, the workshop guests, a lot of them are going to be confused. Our building's not the easiest place to get around in the world. We put a map back in there, but they don't, they're not going to need a map. They've got you. You'll say, oh, no, no, here, I'll take you right where you need to go, and it'll make a big difference. You'll see people walking around with their kids, looking for some place to give them away. Point them down the hall. Get them the right direction. You're Sunset's ambassadors. I hope that you'll show up. Show up for the workshop. I hope you'll also show up for the classes. I hope that you will um, get tickets for things. There's a missions lunch and all that. I've never known a Sunset student yet to want to pass up a free meal. Maybe you'll set a new standard that way as well. Remember to fill up your chair. Some of you will graduate soon. Find someone to sit in your chair. 
There will be new aimers walking around at Camp Adventure. Make sure they fill up your chair. Make sure we're all recruiters during this week. Isn't that right, Tom? Sit up. Not just sit up straight, which my mom would insist upon, but sit up front and center in the classes. Don't crowd around the back. There has to be some people willing to sit up close, and it's going to be us. We're going to do that. Move up. Move up and down the hall and find smaller classes and attend them if choosing between classes. I remember one workshop, I was walking down the hall and a teacher named Norman Gibson came out and grabbed me and said, Chris, walk around, find three or four of your friends and get in that classroom, there's nobody there. And I remember walking in there with a few guys and we sat down and he had like 60 handouts and so we each had one, I thought maybe we should take 10 each or something like that. And it turned out to be one of the most transformative moments in my life as he talked about how to work and live in a small rural congregation. I didn't know at the time that was going to be my future. But I'm glad I went to that class. But I would hate for one of our speakers to sit there feeling pretty lonely while he talks. And that happens sometimes. See a place like that, move in there. Walk up and look at the booths and displays. Down in the annex can be a lot of ministries showing what they do. Some of us know what it's like to be standing there by a display and having people walk past you and not making eye contact. All they want to do is share with you the thing that God called them to do and the thing they're doing in the kingdom. Give them a second to hear that. There will be children's homes. There will be mission teams. There will be great ministries. Listen, you might actually find something you're going to spend the rest of your life doing. Listen up. Listen up to the announcements, not just that, but see the announcements as they flash by on the screen um, so that you'll know what's happening. Christian's been working hard to have every announcement possible ready to flash on the screen, which is good because we both know I'm only going to forget like three quarters of them, so, so I'm glad he's doing that. Speak up. Speak up and thank our speakers and participants for their efforts. I remember once uh, giving a lesson at Harding and I had about 30 students come up and say we just want to say thank you and they, they came up and said thank you. I found out later from my brother-in-law they're expected to do that. That's something they're supposed to do. I was still very flattered though less flattered than I was when I thought I was just such a great popular person. <laughs> Need to cheer up. Some of our guys are broken. They need us to smile. They need us to show them that we're happy they're home. Clean up. Not just after yourself, but after the person next to you because we don't want people trashing our home and it changes the way people look at the whole event. And we shouldn't depend on the church staff to clean up after us either. We need to clean up as we go. Lift up. Let's build one another up. As we're going along, if you see someone doing something good, someone hauling a table somewhere, which you're going to be hauling some tables somewhere, someone moving some chairs, or someone just doing something good, go tell them. I appreciate what you're doing. It'll make it all worthwhile. And then finally, Ms. Tyler. Cowboy up. I'm a, not a great cowboy. I rode a bull once for about one fifteenth of a second. Um, I stood on this panel. The guy said, Cowboy up! And I stood up on the panel, threw my leg over the back of the bull, and it bunched up. And I took my leg off the back of the bull and got down on the ground and said, Man, those people be crazy. Those people be crazy. Um, but it came to mean something different in my culture that I grew up in. It means to always do more than you're asked to do. Always choose the hardest job. 
when you're out and you're working on a farm or on a ranch, take the tough one. Go the farthest. Do the thing that takes the most. Because as you do that, you inspire other people to cowboy up. And there's going to be times when we're not going to feel like doing all the things we want to do. There's going to be times where we feel like we ought to just take a break. Well, cowboy up. We'll do more than that. I have no doubt that this is going to be a great workshop because of you. The speakers are going to do a great job. The speakers, though, are not the most important part of the workshop. Our guests are going to be wonderful and they're going to be fellowshipping and doing all these things. That's great. It's not the best part of the workshop. A lot of people are going to be interpreting a lot of lessons. Okay, that may be the best part of the workshop. No, the best part is the interaction of our family. Every year I'm encouraged by my family as I see us working together to do something that's really bigger than us. And I hope that you know that you're an important part of that. Today is a day where our world looks at someone, looks back to someone who just wouldn't quit talking about his message. He just wouldn't stop. No matter what obstacles were thrown in our way, he would stand up and he would speak. And if his message was unpopular and it might cause him to die someday, he would speak. This is not about politics. This is not about um, your views on social issues. This is about us respecting someone who does what we're supposed to do. Was Dr. King flawed? Of course he was. But so are you when you stand up to speak. Does he have a message that really resonates in his heart and does he really want to change the world with what he says? Of course he did. And so do you. He said, at the end of a sermon, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that matter. I got to tell you, I'm always tempted on days like this to talk about how I dream of a time in this world where my grandchildren will play with his great great grandchildren and all those things because of a very famous speech he delivered years ago. But dreams are not enough for us. I want to call on us today to do what Jesus would call on us to do. Let's don't just hate racism and prejudice and those things. Let's speak. Let's don't just go out to our world and say, this is your problem. We have racism and prejudice and people overlooking others right in the heart of our congregations. We watch the news and we think, look at them. Look at what they're doing. That's so wrong. But the question then becomes, what are you saying? How are, what stand are you taking? A Messiah one day said, I'm here to tear down the walls between peoples. Long before Dr. King said it, Jesus said it. We've got to tear down those walls, and it's got to start with us. It's got to start with me as an individual, and it's got to start with you as an individual. In our lives, we need to eradicate this worldly shame. 
And then it goes to those around us. We have a program at Sunset called Mission America. It deals with several different things. And one of those key tenets, one of the key goals of Mission America is to wipe out racism from the Lord's church. It's our work. It's our business. It's our job. And if it's only one time a year that we think about how we ought to treat all people well, treat all people like Jesus would treat them, then we have a real problem. It's not my job today to talk about race and prejudice and those things. Um, that's for free. You didn't have to pay for that part at all. But we're talking about our need to preach the word. And today, this morning, last night as I was thinking about it, we can't just preach the word that everybody wants to hear. We need to preach the word that caused incredible change in the culture around us. We need to preach the word that causes people to live like Jesus called them to live. And brethren, there is no room for partiality in the Lord's church. I think we all ought to stop and think about a man who stood up to say, that's enough. Because racism and those things have been going on forever. But somebody need to stand up and say it. And someone need to say it in such a way it would even reach the White House. We need to think about what we're going to say. Go preach the word.